listen to in the house of the Lord one more time. God is good. And all the time. Y'all still talking, I believe. I didn't hear enough. God is good. And all the time. We are getting ready to start our devotional service. Everyone will join in. We're going to start out with Walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Every day things happen that we don't understand. As long as we have Oh, my God. 
It's all about believing. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lead everybody the right way. I just I just want to see everybody there. I just want to see everybody there. God for the blessings that you're here to do this for this whole world. Good morning, morning, Shah. Good morning. True little blessing to be up in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes. No matter what's going on in the world, God is still good. Yes. People just don't understand. They've been talking about the police that got killed. But if they're not following God's laws, what makes you think they're going to follow the police laws? So I just want you to stay courage and understand that God got us covered. Like for you to bow your head and go and pray with me and thank God for something He ain't done for you all week, yeah. all month, and all year. Yeah. Okay. Dear Father, I come before you, Father, standing at the throne of grace, thanking you for all that you have done, Father. Thank you, Father, for waking me and my wife up, watching over us, Father, as we slumber and slumber. Father, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And I just want to thank you, Father. Father, I just want to let you know. We can't make it without you, Father. We living in we living in some cruel times right now, Father. People just don't care about one another anymore, Father. So, Father, we just need you to come in and do as you do, Father. We're standing on your word, Father, believing in everything that you say, Father. So, Father, we ask you, Father, today, just touch our morning star church, Father. Father, we need you more than ever, Father. Watch over our mother, boy. We're small in number, but we're small in grace. Father, I come before you, Father, just ask you to watch over our pastor, Father. Let him bring a word on high that we'll leave here with spirit all over our body, Father. Now, Father, bless the first lady, Miss Teresa Claiborne. Father, go out and touch her and make sure that she get the word where she can pass it on this way, Father. Father, I just want to thank you, Father. Father, I just need you to go out and Send us a speedy blessing, Father, on all this crime, Father. Our youth is lost right now, Father. Everyone is afraid. You can't even go to the gas station and get some gas, Father. People getting shot just sitting in the car by, as an innocent bystander, Father. Father, we just need you to go out and touch our youth. Touch the ones that don't know you, Father. Father, I tell you, Father, you did it for me, Father. Father, you have walked me through a, a, a mighty, a mighty big change, Father. I'm not the man that I want to be, but I'm not the man I used to be, Father. And Father, I just want to thank you, Father, for just sharing your word with me, Father. Now, Father, thank you for our deacon, Father, who continue to be patient and work with us, Father. They're growing old in age, Father, but they're strong in grace as well, Father. Father, we need you, Father. So, Father, I just want to come before you and say thank you, Father. I can't thank you enough, Father, because you have been so good to me, Father. Father, you have gave me more organs than I probably need, you, Father. And I just want to thank you, Father. I thank you for this kidney. I thank you for bringing me through my throat, Father. I thank you for my wife, Father. I thank you for my sisters and brothers who've been there for me, Father. I thank you for my church family, Father. They give me strength. They keep me secure and nervous, Father. So, Father, I just want to come before you, Father, and if I have to bless you, Father, and Say my last prayer, Father. I just come before you, Father, saying thank you. These are the prayers of the blessed last of your Father, Son, Jesus Christ. Thank God. Amen. Article of Faith is 
entitled The True God, number two. Are we ready? What a mighty God. Yes, Father, thank you. Number two, the true God. Let's read. We believe the scriptures teach that there is one and only one living and true God, an infinite and intelligent spirit whose name is Jehovah, the maker and supreme ruler of heaven and earth, inexpressibly glorious in holiness and worthy of all possible honor, confidence, and love, that in the unity of the Godhead, there are three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, equal in every divine creation, executing distinct but harmonious offices in the great work of redemption. Amen. The great work of redemption. Our responsive reading, Isaiah 43, 5 through 11. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the Lord, give up, and to the south, do not go. Bring my sons from the heart, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Bring out the people who are mine, give their eyes through one ear. All the nations gather together, and all the people assemble. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let us let them bring their witnesses to prove them right, and let them hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe. Together. I am the Lord, and besides me there is no sin. The word of God for the people of God. The Lord is going to start. My congregation saw it today. It had not been. The Lord is going to
Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. God be the glory on this, another Lord's Day. Welcome all those who have joined us here in this section prayer and those who have joined us by way of YouTube. We do thank God for your presence in this place and on the line. We just thank God for you. I was compelled this morning to get up and do it all to call because there are so many things going on, not only in our city, but in our world. Amen. I often tell people I only make it through the day because I have this one thing. The Lord is good. Uh, in Nahum 1 and 7, he said, the Lord is good. I can leave it right there. Because it deals with a dark time in the world. And we as believers in Jesus Christ, if we're going to have to make it in this old mean world we in, we have to remind ourselves that the Lord is good. Yeah. I, I, I might be out of a job, but the Lord is good. Yeah. It might be cancer, but the Lord is still good. Listen, if I roll over in the morning and can't get out of bed, the Lord is still good. I may lose my house, but the Lord is still good. Listen, I might be sick in my body, but the Lord is still good. Come to the altar. 
is just leave it at the altar. Yes. It's my prayer you don't pick it up and take it back with you. Because the Lord is good. The more I get that in my spirit, the more confident and sure I am that God is with us. You can trust this God. If there's any other prayer requests, you might call them out now. Good to see Tiffany too. Forgive us for our sins. Father, there are so many things happening in this world. We thank you for the ability to switch channels, Lord. That we might see your goodness, Father God. That we might see how you keep us. How you provide for us. How you keep your presence with us, Father God. We focus on those things, Lord. We thank you for those gifts, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for loving us so much. And Father God, we, we, we acknowledge, Father God, that the enemy is on the move. He's attacking families, Father God. He's attacking marriages, Father God. He's attacking our children, Father God. But Father God, on today, Lord, we claim victory in Christ Jesus, Lord. We know, Father God, that the weapon may form, but it won't prosper, Father God. Father God, we know it may not look good, Father God, but we know the end result of this fallen world, Lord. We thank you for being our God. Now, Father God, you heard the petition of these, your people, Lord. Some are asking for one thing. Some are asking for another, Father God. Some need to be testing their bodies, Father God. Some need to be testing their finances. But, Father God, whatever the need is, you know you know what each and every situation is today, Lord. So, Father God, as I stand and offer this prayer, Father God, I ask that you bring peace to the fruit hard, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you bring strength to those that are being weakened. 
God, and attach that in it, Father God. And Father God, we pray for those who bow down heads, Father God, because we know you ought to lift up our heads, Father God. In this season of bereavement right now, Father. So many of us are leaving here, Father God. But Father God, we know nothing is happening without just say so, Lord. So Father God, we just ask that you be with us, Lord. That you go on this journey with us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you while we're on this Jesus journey, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for all you're doing, Lord. We thank you for all you're going to do, Lord. And Father God, we thank you for Jesus. Who hung, bled, and died on the cabin, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Now, Father God, we say a special prayer for the man in our hour. As he come break the bread of life this morning, Lord. I pray that you anoint him afresh, Lord. That you guard his mind against distractions, his heart against pride, and his tongue against error. And Father God, we'll be forever mindful to give you all the glory, the honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we do pray. And the people of God say amen, amen, and amen.
Malachi 10 said, bring unto me all the tithes into the storehouse. Old Testament verse. But I like Paul's version of it better than every man give as his purpose in his heart. I have a reason for wanting to give back to God. First of all, y'all experiencing it right now. The light's on. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. We're able to do for the poor. Amen. Amen. God has been gracious to us. So we should be gracious to know that he trusted us with the 100% yes, and only asked us for 10 hundred back. Ain't that something? Amen. You can't be God given. If you did not receive an envelope upon your entrance into the sanctuary, just hold your hand up and a good looking usher back there. She show serving for you. That's my wife right there. All right, man. Church ain't got no first lady. That's my lady. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> God gave her to me. He, he, gave, he gave me to y'all. But he gave her to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you're ready for the offer, won't you raise your hand, up and just thank God for something. Thank God for something. Lord, you've been so good. We thank you for this opportunity to just give back. We thank you, Father God, for those who are here today, Lord. Thank you with an open heart to give, Lord. And we just thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, officers will come first, and then you'll be in the hands of the usher. Father God, and bless those that gave, Father God. We pray the increase in their lives, Father. 
Father God, 60, 30, 60, 100 fold more, Father God. And we just thank you for being our God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The next voice out the choir come back with their selection that you hear. I'll be none other than our brother. One of the co-labels of the faith. Brother Sean Norris. Look forward to hearing what the Lord has to say through him. Amen. So we so I honestly solicit your prayer. And we tend to listen to see what the Lord has to say. Amen. Amen. Amen.
said it was the first time that I understood. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh wow. I was thankful because I didn't understand. And then I looked up at God and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to focus on the children. And I started my teaching ministry. And as I grew, I branched out. But I come to tell you this morning that God has been good to me. Yes. Even when I have not been good to myself. Oh, yes. 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 For those of you that know God, I'm sure all of us do. I'm come to share that that is a release been taken right now. A release is in the atmosphere. If you don't understand what I'm saying thus far, because I see all the faces, sometimes we find ourselves in situations. We find ourselves in, in positions in life that we we see ourselves coming out, but we have not been released from that situation. Yes. Right. We have not been released. God is releasing you today. He's releasing you today. If you don't understand, still understand. When Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus, he called Lazarus to come for him. But Lazarus came still tied down, bound, wrapped up. So what I'm telling you today, although God has called you out of your situation, some of us are still wrapped up. Some of us are still tied down to that situation. But God is releasing you. He's calling you out today to be released from whatever you are up under. It's up to you to hear his call. So the pastor, my pastor, kind of scared to say this, but I'm going to say what well, his wife, because I can't call him first lady. <laughs> I give praise. Without offending anyone to my other first lady. I will always acknowledge you. You have been a blessing to my family. Amen. And I love you dearly. Amen. To each of you. To my family. Amen. They just came out. Yeah. There is a word from God today. Yeah. There is a word from God. If you will, I'm not going to stand here before you come on. I, I know how our mind wanted. But it's a shame. If I were going in overtime playing in a um, Super Bowl, we'd be glued to the TV. If the Titans were going to double overtime, we'd be too scared to even go to the bathroom. But let the preacher say, I'm closed at one time too many. Everybody's looking at the watch. <laughs> what you gonna do if you stand at them prayer gates and God is saying to somebody else, we are too impatient. But we got time for everything else but God. We got time for everyone else but God. God ain't going back to that church they preach too long. Sometimes we need to be preached the hell out of us. Some of us got 
that's so much hell, it don't take a five minute sermon. And you know the one with the hell in them because they're the first ones after the <laughs> Those of us that sitting here, when I finish, I thank you. <laughs> For those of us that walk out that door before I finish, I know who you are. <laughs> if you will, turn with me to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Verse 1 through 11. All right. And we have a place stand. You can stand for the judge in the courtroom. You can stand for the word of God. We can lift our hands up and somebody robbing us. We can lift them up for God. So we, we, we have time for everything and everyone else but God. Amen. And it reads, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was after and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taken him up to the holy city and seated him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in thy hand that shall bear thee up, least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And the devil taken him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And Jesus said unto him, and said, I mean, and said unto him, All these things will I give thee. How are you going to give something that don't belong to you? If thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. I'm going to stop there. Amen. For a brief moment, I'm use as a topic how to recognize God's blessings over Satan's gift while in your wilderness. How to recognize God's blessings over Satan's gift while going through your wilderness. It's going to all make sense by the time I sit down. God protects and provides. Right. <clears throat> Satan pursues and persists. Okay. God will lift you up. Yes, yes. Satan gonna tear you down. Yes. God fixes you. Mm. Satan will break you. Mm. God will strengthen you. Yes. But Satan will weaken you. God's spirit dwells in us 
where Satan wants his spirit to be in us. God wants all of us to be saved. Satan wants you to stay lost. How do I recognize God's blessings over Satan's gift? Before we get into that, first we must understand that the wilderness does not mean that we are in a desert place. It don't mean you out in a Sahara desert on top of a mountain in the middle of the ocean. But it consists, the wilderness consists of any person, place, thing, or even situation that you have your mind unfocused from God. Your wilderness. Your wilderness comes from low self Expression. Your wilderness comes from isolating yourself. Your wilderness comes from depression or any health problem that gets your mind off of God. Yes. Yes. Your wilderness comes from stress. It comes from desperation. Yeah. Come on, come on. Even when you're desperate. Yeah. You can find yourself in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your wilderness comes from it's good, good. Hmm. Being impatient oh, with God. Yeah. We want things when we want them. Mm -hmm. We live in a society where everything is hurry, hurry. We don't even have time to prepare a good old-fashioned home cooking meal. <laughs> we, we, want, we want to push that two zero zero. <laughs> two minutes on the microwave. We don't have time to season your food. To let it marinate overnight. To put it on a certain temperature. Let it slow cook. That's the way God wants us. He seasons us. He let us marinate. And he cook us slow. Because if we get cooked too fast, It might be rough, mm -hmm. not taste right, mm -hmm. not chew right, mm -hmm. but we are impatient mm -hmm. when it comes to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. 27 numbers of Psalm 14 verse states, wait on, on the Lord, be of good courage, mm -hmm. and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That seems like it's just so hard for us to do, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's wait on God. We come in church Sunday after Sunday singing praises to God, lifting up His name. But half the time by Sunday evening when we walk out the doors, we didn't let God in here. <laughs> let the truth be told. <laughs> we didn't let God right here, 1472 Locusts. <laughs> until next Sunday morning. <laughs> The saying is God's everywhere at the same time. The reason he's everywhere because we're leaving him everywhere. We're not taking him with us. He's not in us. We are too impatient. But yet we walk around trying to figure out why my life the way it is. 
Why I can't get out of this situation? Why, why I got through so much trials and tribulation? It's because God's trying to get your attention. Since you don't have his, he allow us to go through some things. He even allows Satan to tempt us with some things. If he allows Satan to tempt his only begotten son, who are you? You holier than Jesus? You can't be tempted? You can't go through trials and tribulations? You can't stay strong in the word or the Lord. So there's something bad called we brace. We got our heads down. But the Bible said, I will lift my eyes towards the hills. From which comes my head. We walk around. Whether you realize it or not, we're saying. Where is that? And that's what we look to. Every time you drop your eyes, put your head down, you look and say, you walk around doing pity parties. Instead of looking up where your help come from, you looking down, say, yeah, you can have me. That's why we stay in our situations too long. Psalms 135 says, I wait for the Lord, my whole damn waits. And in his word, I put my hope. And who words? God. God said, we are that he in God's temple. Yes, sir. God said, greater is he that is in us than yes. he that is in the world. Right. God said, if you ask, I shall give unto you. Yes. God said, not in the door shall open. In his words, I put my hope. Yes. Yes. When we put our hopes in God, Pastor, while we walking around the house, Two o'clock in the morning, trying to figure out how I'm gonna pay a light bill next month. <laughs> next month. You just paid it this month, baby. You got thirty more days <laughs> to worry about a light. Thirty. Some months, thirty-one. We worry about the wrong things in life. Our priorities are not together. We don't even come together as a people. The city of Memphis right now. It's, it's like the criminals got more rights. They won't put everybody else on curfew. You can't be on bill if you have a certain time and you might get robbed. You might get killed. They got the freedom to do whatever they want to. Well, we don't want to send them to jail because they don't have nothing to do. <laughs> jail. They make it so easy. They got computers, phones, everything they want in there. Go to college free. I'm still struggling with student loans. <laughs> My credit shot for student loans. But I can go commit a crime and come out of doctor. <laughs> Free the talk. You tell me how far I want this. Yeah. 
Isaiah 40 and 31 said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. I, 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 I hear some Bible readers. I, I hear some Bible readers. We, we know scriptures. We quote scriptures. Don't throw nothing at them for walking and say, but we don't do scriptures. We, we can walk around quoting scriptures all day long. We see people, people hey, see us coming. Do you know, thus said the Lord. We quote scriptures all day long. But do we live by it? Amen. Do we live by it? Your strength comes from waiting and being patient with God. As I said, we need to learn how to recognize God's blessings over Satan's gift. Because whether you realize or not, Satan is in competition with God. He competes against God. But he cannot enter into you unless you allow it. Satan walks around here. His spirit just like God. But he looks for a vessel to take over. Only way that Satan could enter into us is at our weakest moment. Yeah, yeah. When you take your mind off of God, yes. you pray to God, Lord, I need this. Lord, help me with that. Don't you know Satan was once an angel in heaven? He still has the capability of hearing your prayers. And when we become impatient with God, Satan steps in. Yes. Next thing we know, we, we receive what we're praying for, but it's not of God. Yeah. We're thinking when God can bless us, yeah. but in reality, it's a gift from Satan. Because he hears your prayers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He knows you ain't going to wait on God. He know you were impatient. How do he know? Because you ask God for the same thing over and over. You still try to get the thing that you pray for. Satan is a mind trickster. So he would put these things in your life. You pray for a husband or wife. But we don't wait on God. The first one smiled in your face. Got a pocket full of money. Look good, smell good. Girl, God, they sent me a hug. Two years down the road. Girl, I don't know what he came. Go nowhere, can't do nothing. Black guys. Because you're impatient. It's not just with the, the women. Man, we look for wives too quick. She look good. Nice curve. Can't 
ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು Got your hair turning gray at 25. But she looks good. Then you wonder, where did she come from? Satan does all he can to compete against God, but he really can't. You have to give him permission. Yes. To come into you. Access. That's right. Because he first gets the first permission from God. This connection from God is giving Satan permission to come into your life. God represents the saved, whereas Satan purposes to keep you from being saved. That's his job. If the devil isn't messing with you right now, he already got you. You walk inside by side. Girl, then I don't, I don't, then Satan don't mess with me. He ain't gonna mess with somebody you already got. You think you're being blessed, but you're being gifted. I got everything I need. Girl, I just bought me a new car. You ain't got the money to pay for that car. Now you're working two, three jobs to keep that car. That's not a blessing. Come on, come on, child. God don't bless you to stress you. Say that again, but it sounded good after I said it. <laughs> God don't bless you to stress you. When you gotta work overtime, triple time, to keep something that you can't enjoy, but everybody else can enjoy. You got a five bedroom house. Every bedroom in that four. You the only one working, but you the only one not at home. And I ain't talking about no baby kids. Kids 20, 30 years old enjoying your house. Telling you what to do in your house. Mama, we ain't got no food in your house. Mama, did you see the light here on the table in your house? But yeah, that's my baby. No, that's your man. Pray unto God. Satan hears our prayer as well. He, he also, a spirit, he sees that you are in a hurry. He knows your weakness. He knows when he can come in. Because we, we so blind that we, well, that's what I asked for. That's what I asked for. Your blessings from God will always be debt free. Because it has been paid and full. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. If we look at the text this morning, I see that Jesus had just got baptized. 
and went down to the watery grave. As he came up, the Spirit of God was descended down upon him. All right. God spoke yes. to those that was there. This is my beloved son, whom I am pleased. Have you ever noticed that in your life when somebody prays you, here come the devil? Yeah. <laughs> when people, I'm proud of you, here come the devil. I used to tell people, don't tell me you're proud of me no more. <laughs> more people was telling me that, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> I used to I hate to hear that word. But you do a good old oh, Lord. <laughs> Can't come here, devil. <laughs> you can always tell when the devil's coming. <laughs> but here, Jesus was led up in the spirit by the spirit. I used to hear people say the devil took him down. Devil wasn't even on the scene yet. We're not even in verse 3 yet. But the spirit, God, our head to prepare Jesus. He had to let Jesus know that who he was. The same way God has to let us know who we are <laughs> and whose we are. So he sent us through some trials and tribulations in life mm -hmm. to be tested and tempted. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And the, the second verse said, and when he had fasted for 40 days, and 40 nights. He was what? Hungry. He was probably going at home and he was tired. He was weak. He was a whole lot of things. And then came the tempt. What did I just say? He can't come to you unless you're weak. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. And I walk you unless you're weak. Because if you are on fire for the Lord, the devil's gonna flee from you. But as soon as you in your pity party state, as soon as you got your head held down, Lord, I can't do this no more. The devil said, Yes, you can. But do it my way. The same way he did Adam and Eve. God just said you're gonna surely die. The same way he did Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. They was all in heaven. But what did he say to them? If you be the son of God. Really? If you be the son of God. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled because Verse 1 said he was laid up in the spirit. So Jesus is not in the body form. He's in the spirit form. Mm -hmm. The same form he was in heaven. When Satan was there in heaven. So he knew who Jesus was. The same way he knows who you are. If you are a child of God. He didn't truly say you can't dance or hip hop no more. We bring hip hop into the church now. Because Satan said, he didn't say you can't do that no more. Praise and worship look like a nightclub. <laughs> We need to get back to that old religion. Well, we attracted more of the young folks. We ain't supposed to attract everybody. The church, they come as you are, but once you get here, some change is supposed to take place. 
They didn't say stay the way you are. They said come as you are. But when you come, some changes supposed to take place. That's right. But the only thing that's changing is the church. Because we trying to take you in. We have service around your schedule. Come on, come on. We don't have Wednesday night service, Thursday night service, because don't too many come out no more. The back will say, well, there's one or two. Well, there's one or two. Well, we're going to close this evening because the weather's bad. I remember that was a man here, JT Poole. <laughs> he used to walk to church all type of weather. We came and drive in the rain. Priorities. I uh, say so Satan likes to catch you unfocused and disconnected from God, even if it's just for a short time. As long as your mind stays on Jesus, as long as you keep looking towards the hills in which your help comes from, as long as you believe you are the head and not the tail, as long as you believe you are an overcomer, as long as you believe that greater is he that's in you, than he that's in the world. As long as you continue to have faith, Satan cannot destroy you. The Bible says Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill your spirit. Steal your relationship from God and destroy your faith. As I say, Satan, they call him a trickster because he would throw God's word back at you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. All right. But I will. <laughs> the same way we allow certain people to misuse God's word. For their benefits. Everything that shines ain't gold. God loves you. He said, Satan said, if God loves you, why are you not healed? If God loves you, why? You still jobless. If God loves you, why don't have the thing that you are asking for? Once again, God's blessing, I pray with no strings attached, no worries, no stress, how to keep or you have to be praying for the Bible said, when praises goes up, blessings will come down. We want blessings to come down, but don't want to send praises up. What you've been to get you strength where you are going in life. If you've never been through nothing in life, you don't have the strength to go continue for the next level that God is putting you on. I'm going to share this. Your wilderness is your past. It's part of your story. But it is not the end of your story. We want to understand when we're going through stuff that this is it. But I come to tell you that victory is yours. 
no matter what you go through in life, victory is yours. How I know victory is yours because victory went on trial. Victory stood before council. They gave the people the opportunity to let victory go free. But I kept hearing everyone saying, kill it. And my sanctified and Baptist mind, I can hear a butcher coming in the crowd. All right. Kill. So why do you want us to kill? Because I fought a victory out into the wilderness one day. It's a multitude of people. As a butcher, I took my meat out there, thinking I'm gonna make a lot of money. But as I got on the scene, I saw a victory with two fish in his hand. Breaking fish, making fish, breaking fish, making fish. Come on, Sean. I heard the baker stand up. Yeah, Mr. Butcher, I was there with you. Come on, come on. And when I got there, I saw the same victory standing before the congregation. Breaking bread, making bread. Breaking bread, making bread. Yeah, yeah. Breaking bread. Y'all want to catch on in a minute. Breaking bread, making bread. You see, y'all, when you put something small in that victory hand, it will stretch. When you put your life in victory hand, it will get healed. He's breaking bread, making bread. I, 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 heard, I heard the doctor stand up. Uh, we need to kill this victory. Because I had some patience. Everybody I had, he healed. But I had this one lady for 12 long years. And I heard victory coming to town. And she heard that he was coming. And the only thing the woman did was touch the hem of his God. Is anybody willing to touch this hymn today? She touched the hymn and, and all he said was, Your faith has made the hope. So one more person in a crowd. I can hear the undertaker coming down through the crowd. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Undertaker looked up, he said, Oh, yes, he needs to go. I'm not making no money. He said, Jerry's daughter had passed away. They called me to come get the body. As I showed up on the city, I saw Victory sitting on the bed with Jerry's daughter. So I wasn't able to make no money. That but then he said, but that's not the worst part. Come on, come on. I had a widow's son. We was taking him to the cemetery. Yes, sir. But victory was on the same path that we was on. Yeah. And when the, the, the young boy body came across victory, yes, sir. the young man rolled from yes, the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You need to kill victory today because I'm not making any money. Well, can you give me one more example? He said, yeah. I hit another man by the name of Lazarus. I went to and put him in a grave. His sisters then they gave me all of my money. I thought the story was over. But somebody told me that Lazarus was a friend of victory. And I heard that four days later, victory came to that grave. And he called Lazarus out from the grave. Yeah. But that's not the end of the story. Because victory went to the cross. They nailed him to the cross. They put a crown upon his head. 
The crown represents your victory. Because whenever you have headaches now, you got the victory to release it. They put nails in his hand. When you have arthritis going through your hands and feet, understand it was victory. They whooped him on the back. I heard someone say, by his stripes. By his stripes. By his stripes. I am here. Each stripe represents backpack. When you're walking around talking about my back is hurting, remember by his stripes, I am here. They pierce him in the side. Whatever organ problems you may have going on in your body. Remember victory gave you power. But victory did stop that. Because he hung on in this cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the sixth to the ninth hour. Yes. Somebody said victory could have came back. Yes. But he knew he was fighting for you, and you, and you. Yes. He knew that one day you were going to be sick. He knew one day you were going to go to some heartache. Yes. So he stayed there from the sixth to the ninth hour. Yes. But victory. Drop his head in the locks of his shoulder. The story that stopped there. Because before victory went up, he had to come back. He went down to the pits of hell. He released the believers that was there before him. When he rose up that third morning, victory rose up with all power in his hand. Because he knew that one day we were going to be able to call on his life. So I don't know about you right now. I don't know why you sit in church and don't say a long word. Because victory is mine. When victory rose, he transferred victory over to us. He gave us the victory in order for us to be able to live our life. They never said the road would be easy. But we have victory. Look at yourself today. Each one of us knows someone that's not here today. But we still here. We still here. So what are you going to do with the victory that Jesus has left in your hand? Live a normal life or live a glorious life. The power is in your hand tonight. The power is in your hand. May God be a blessing to each and every one of you. But remember this as I take my seat. Every blessing is not of God. Sometimes it's a gift from Satan. So when you are praying and you are being impatient with God, Satan gives you what you pray for. But our mindset that it's from God. As I said, I'm saying last time, God don't bless you to stress you.
goes to the church over here. Goes to the church over here. I made you no victory in the fire. Victory in the fire. 